is Dr. Bob Danhofer. I'm the public health officer from Douglas County. And over the past few weeks, we've gotten some information about social distancing and the use of masks. And I would agree, it's all pretty confusing. So I'm in my shop today, and I think we're going to try and explain to you how this works. So whenever we breathe, we make a little bit of respiratory droplets. When we talk, we make more. When we scream, we make more still. When we cough, we make more still. And when we sneeze, it goes all over the place. Now, there is no perfect analogy to the human droplets that people make, but spray paint is actually pretty close. It probably makes more droplets than you do when you breathe, but a lot less than when you sneeze. So it's not an unreasonable approximation to that. So today we're going to show you how this works. First, I'm going to spray some paint, spray paint at white poster board from about 10 feet away. As you can see, there's not very much spray on that poster board, and that's why at 10 feet you're pretty safe. Now, I'm going to spray some gray spray paint from about 3 feet away, from about 6 feet away. And as you can see, still not very much from six feet away. Some gold spray paint from about three feet away. And as you can see, we're starting to see quite a bit of, of spray around here. Each of these droplets would have millions of viruses. To spray this from a foot and a half away. Now that seems like awfully close, but on a plane you can be 17 to 19 inches away. At a ball game, you're a similar amount. And as you can see, from a foot and a half away, it's all over the place. Ten feet away, there was very little spray. At six feet, there was just starting to be a little bit. At three, there was a lot. And at 18 inches, there's a lot. So again, that's our, our recommendation. Six feet of social distancing to protect you from other people's spray. Let's talk about the use of masks. Now, you can use masks to protect yourself from others, or you can to protect, use the mask to protect others from yourself. So we've gotten some of these Mardi Gras style masks here, and I've covered it now with a homemade cloth mask. Uh, really a pretty nice one, pretty nicely fitting. And so up here on the wall, we have another one of these guys, and this is about the amount of spray that you get at a time where you're close to lots of people. Let's say you were a ball game or on an airplane, of uh, the different things. So you can see there's a lot of spray some of it is on the mask and some of it is on the rest of the face. And as I take this down, take the mask off, you can see that it worked pretty well, but there's still a little spray around the mouth and the nose, and there's a lot of spray up here. So if you touch your face and your nose, you can get it in very well. So wearing a mask to protect yourself from illness is good, but not touching your face and nose is really the most important thing. Now let's see how well masks prevent the spray that you might make from getting to others. So again, we have our, our Mardi Gras style mask covered by a homemade cloth mask and our spray paint from 18 inches. So in our spray paint from 18 inches, you can see if we do this, almost none of that black spray paint makes it to the, to the poster board. Look what happens now when we don't use a mask on this guy. Without a mask, this is what it looks like. The difference is really obvious. So again, looking at the, my little Mythbusters thing here today, being more than six feet away, pretty protective. Wearing a mask when you're sick or you might be getting sick, incredibly effective. And wearing a mask to prevent yourself from getting disease, it could be effective, but most important with that is don't touch your face and don't touch your eyes. Again, this is Dr. Bob Dannenhofer. I hope this explains a little bit of the confusing stuff about masks and social distancing. Thank you.